TK Coleman. Woo -woo! Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, people and people, enemies and allies, human beings from every category of being, welcome to FECON 2019. All right, so that was the dress rehearsal. You always need a dress rehearsal, right? You wanna do one quick run through where everybody feels like it's the real thing so we can all loosen up. And now that we know what we gotta do, we can really bring the energy this time. So I'm gonna push the rewind button and we're gonna do this whole thing again, but let's spice it up a little bit. First, a little call and response. When I say set your path, I want you to say change the world. Let's try that. Set your path. And when I say change the world, you say set your path. Change the world. Set your path. All right. The second thing I want to do is get some kind of drum roll going. Things are always more dramatic and fun when you have the musical effects. If you've ever watched reality TV, I know we all pretend not to be involved with that kind of stuff, but they always do the music. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, doom, and that's what invokes the emotion. So let's get a little music effect in. Now there are two ways you can make a drum sound. You pick your way of choice. One is you can sort of tap your feet. The other is you can. But we're gonna get a drum roll going. I'm gonna hit the rewind button. We're gonna do this again and we're gonna do it right. And we're gonna give it the enthusiasm of people who are actually interested in setting our path and changing the world. Voice of God, Mike says, welcome to the stage, TK Coleman. Woo woo! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, people and people from every walk of life, from every category of being, welcome to FECON 2019. <laughs> it is time to set your path, change the world. it is time to change the world, change the path. let's do it. <laughs> so I got to tell you, even though I'm hyped up about this slogan of ours, there is kind of a problem. Change the world is like the cheesiest phrase you could possibly use for a conference, right? I mean, and I know we, we all know it, we're all thinking it. I mean, there is no faster way to lose credibility and to be associated with a wannabe motivational guru than to go around talking like, change the world. That's right up there with, uh, what's the one from Silicon Valley? Make the world a better place, right? Make a difference. It reminds me of this cartoon I saw when I was a kid where the rich kids got a trip to Disneyland and there was a small group of poor kids who couldn't go. They didn't have the money. And so they're all crying about it. And there's one kid who says, hey guys, don't worry. We don't need to go to Disneyland. You know why? Because we have the, uh, the power of imagination. And there's a Disneyland inside each and every one of us. And there's no limit on how many rides we can get on. There's no long lines that we have to wait in. It's gonna be the best time ever, all because of creativity. And all the other kids kind of looked at him like, nah, man, we want to go to Disneyland. <laughs> you keep the imagination, we'll take the money. That's, that's kind of what it feels like, right? When we use phrases like change the world. But I want you to pay special attention to what we do with that phrase. Because what we, what we do with that phrase is indicative of what we do at Fee as a whole. We don't lead with change the world. We put that after something. And the order is very important. We put it after set your path. When most people talk about changing the world, they use that phrase prescriptively. A prescription is any instruction or set of instructions about what you ought to do. You better do your homework. You better obey the law. It's when we give you our opinions about how you should live based on perceived necessity, based on guilt, based on duty, obligation, and so forth. But a description is when you simply give a logical delineation of things that occur when certain conditions have been obtained. So for instance, if I say, you know, in the summertime, 
It gets really humid in Atlanta. That's a description. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm not giving you my opinion about how you ought to live your life. I'm just telling you something about how reality works. When we talk about change the world, we don't talk about this prescriptively. We don't mean, hey, you need to force yourself to be the kind of person who makes a difference or feel guilty or feel like a worthless human being or feel like you're doing something wrong. What we mean is much more empowering and much more profound. And that is the phrase change the world is simply a description of what you will naturally do, of what you will skillfully do when you begin to live your life in a manner that is deliberate and differentiated. When you begin to embrace the reality of your own power, when you dare to be the kind of person who sets their own path. One of my favorite stories about setting your own path comes from Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is the acclaimed astrophysicist, and he talks about how when he first started his career, well, he grew up, his, his father wasn't a scientist, his father was a civil rights activist. So in his childhood, his home was filled with conversations about things like social justice, things like disenfranchisement, and he was always interested in things like why the night sky was so bright, or the origins or natures of the, cos the cosmos, or why tiny particles behaved the way they did. And that certainly didn't have anything to do with social justice, right? His parents were supportive, but his friends would often tease him, or his friends would often respond like, why are you interested in weird things? So when he's in college, he's a freshman, and he has a close friend and a mentor who's a senior. And this guy is a Rhodes Scholar. He studies economics, and he's all about changing the world. In fact, his dream is to focus on research related to opportunity zones and empowering people to overcome poverty through entrepreneurship. I have a <clears throat> panel on that <clears throat> right after this. Um, and, and I mean, so this is a guy who clearly cares about changing the world. So one day, him and Neil deGrasse Tyson are walking across campus. And um, he says, how, how are things going? And Neil says, oh, man, you know, my, my math exams are really killing me. And he's complaining about his homework. And his friend says, what do you study again? And he says, physics. And he says, huh, what are you going to do with that? And Neil says, I'm not sure. I just love it. And then his friend says something that he would never forget, words that would make life difficult for him for the next several years. His friend says, you know, Neil, with all due respect, as a black man, I don't think you can afford to waste your intellect on something as abstract and far removed from the problems of our community like physics. And Neil said, man, that took him back. He didn't get offended, he got guilty because this is a guy that he respects and this is a guy that wasn't just talking the talk, he was proving every day that he was out there caring about people that were suffering. Now, Neil deGrasse Tyson was saved by his obsession with physics. Because even if someone could make a case that it was unethical, there's nothing he could do to stop studying this stuff because he was such a nerd. And so he continued to nerd out on physics. But he never forgot this conversation. And he always questioned himself, am I really making the world a better place or am I just being this selfish guy doing things that aren't helping my people but that are only interesting to me? Fast forward, 1989. He's in Columbia University for grad school. He gets a call from a local reporter who says, there are some weird things going on in the sky. I'm wondering if anybody there from the department can explain what's going on. And in far more sophisticated language than I can summarize, he explains in a scientifically literate way that there's a, it's essentially a blob of plasma. And once that heads towards Earth, it's going to collide with the molecules in our atmosphere, and it's going to result in this phenomenon known as the Northern Lights. So get ready to go outside and enjoy something beautiful. And the reporter says, so the earth is safe. And Neil says, yeah, 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 the earth is safe. And the reporter says, okay, can I get you to come down to the station, get on camera and say that for TV? And Neil says, uh, okay, I'm a broke grad student. I have literally one suit. I don't know if it's clean. Uh, yeah, I'll be there, pick me up. Uh, and, and, and he rushes home, puts on his one suit, goes to the television station, gets on TV, and he says his message. And it wasn't a message directed to black people. It wasn't a message that said, hey, black people, there's some crazy stuff happening in the sky. We're going to be OK, so don't worry about it. But man, everybody else, it, it wasn't a message like that. It was simply a message 
about the power and the beauty and the symmetry of nature, a message that created value for everyone. So he goes home and he's watching this with his family and he has an epiphany. He says at that time, he had never seen a black person on television talking with expertise about something like physics without also talking about how special it is for a black person to be doing that. And he said, oh my, the next time someone sees a black person doing something idiotic, maybe they'll think to themselves, ah man, if that guy had only applied himself or if that guy had only had a little bit of support, he might have become a physicist. More importantly, his intuition was confirmed because years later, people after people came to him and said things like, Dr. Tyson, I'm a chemist because of you. Dr. Tyson, I'm a physicist because of you. Dr. Tyson, I decided to be an engineer because of you. Dr. Tyson, I don't love the sciences, but when I saw a black man get on television and talk intelligently about things I cannot understand, it made me have the confidence that, hey, I can do that too. Black people were coming to this man saying to him, you are the reasons, you are the reason that I'm a scientist, that I'm an engineer, that I'm an entrepreneur. And he produced that effect simply by following his own bliss, by being a self-interested individual who dared to do something for no other reason than that he believed in it and he found meaning in it. By the way, the Rhodes Scholar, he went back to look for him because he wanted to tell him about his epiphany. He says he couldn't find him. Google him, couldn't find him on the internet. He doesn't know where that guy is. He doesn't know what he's up to. Maybe he's doing some good, maybe he's not. But for Neil, he experienced the inner freedom that comes from knowing that the best way to change the world is not by looking around at all the things that need to be dealt with in life and saying, well, I gotta figure out the most important one. Because the problem with being led by guilt is that no matter how much good you do, there is an opportunity cost for that good, and there is far more good that you will be left undone. So I can guarantee for everyone here, when you die, you will leave way more good undone than the good you do, guaranteed. So if you're trying to do good on a guilt-based approach, you're done for. You'll never be free from guilt. So how do we change the world? We change the world according to the words of another civil rights activist, Howard Thurman. Howard Thurman said, ask not yourself what the world needs, but rather what makes you come alive? For that is what the world needs, people who have come alive. But this isn't just a fluff story. There's some philosophy behind this. The truth of the matter is that there are possibilities born out of love that simply don't arise out of duty. How many of you, when you were growing up, have ever been required by your parents to take out the garbage? All right, so here's a question. I already know there's gonna be at least one person in the audience who answers in some crazy way, but I want you to be honest here. Here's a question for you. When your parents told you to go take out the garbage, how many of you went to the house of every single one of your neighbors and took out their garbage too? Not a single person. That's a very rational thing. Let me explain that. The reason you took out your gar garbage wasn't because you wanted to. It was because your parents made you do it, right? So your motive for doing it was duty. I have to do just enough to avoid getting in trouble, and that's it. If you do anything beyond that, you are being irrational. You are literally wasting your own time, right? You are doing something that you don't want to do and something that you don't have to do. Why would you ever do that, right? So you do just enough to avoid getting in trouble and then you stop. That's what duty does every single time. We figure out what the rules are, we figure out what we have to do in order to not be seen as a bad person, in order to check the right boxes, and we do that and then we stop. Duty can only take you so far. But what about love? Well, as an example, um, let's say my mom tells me, you know, TK, there's this girl named Sandy, and Sandy's a really good girl, and I think you ought to take Sandy out on a date. And I go, but mom, I don't like Sandy. And she goes, well, I'm making you do it. You owe me a favor anyway. <laughs> okay, so I go out on a date with Sandy. I don't want to be there. My mom made me be there. How do you think I'm going to act? You think I'm going to write a poem for Sandy? 
No, probably not, right? I'm probably gonna do just enough to avoid getting in trouble, just enough to say, okay, mom, I did that thing you wanted me to do, and that's it. But now let's contrast Sandy with my wife, Michelle. My mom never told me, hey, there's a girl named Michelle, and I want you to go pursue her. But Michelle was a girl that caught me by surprise. I'm working in Applebee's one day, this beautiful girl comes in, and all of a sudden I completely lose my marbles. And in that moment, a poet is born. A songwriter is born, right? An artist is born. I find all kinds of ideas and insights coming out of me that I didn't even know existed, right? Because those are the possibilities born out of love. When something fires you up, when something makes you come alive, you not only do what you need to do, but you go beyond it. You go beyond what is required of you. You don't just go the essential mile, you go the extra mile and beyond. That is what happens when you have the courage to set your own path. This isn't about changing the world, it's about, about a very particular way to change the world. One of the greatest economic insights given to us was by Leonard Reed, Leonard Reed and I Pencil. There's also an excellent video version of it, but read the, read the material, read the article first. There's also an excellent talk on YouTube by Milton Friedman where he gives another ex explanation of it. But the fundamental point of I, I Pencil is that no person knows how to make a pencil. We don't get pencils through central planning. We don't get pencils through committees getting together, trying to figure out what humanity needs. And we don't get pencils as a result of people saying, hey, uh, what's a way to uh, make society a better place? Oh yeah, pencils, that's a good idea. Let's make a thing like that. We get pencils through a process called spontaneous order. A bunch of individuals in different places who don't know each other, don't care, each, care about each other, in some ways dislike each other. They're all chasing after what makes them come alive. And the miracle is this valuable thing gets created and it's more valuable than anything that a committee could have produced. The way you change the world is the same way that you make a pencil. It's by having the courage to set your own path to consider not, as what, not what is important to others, not what makes me look virtuous, not what I have to do, not what the worst problems are based on statistical arguments, but rather what makes me come alive as an individual. This weekend, you're gonna be exposed to some of the greatest scholars, to some of the greatest entrepreneurs and innovators and thinkers in the world. And they're gonna share a lot of different insights, insights about economics, entrepreneurship, art, politics, all sorts of wonderful things. My challenge to you is don't miss the point by taking in all of these ideas as if it is mere fuel to go run back home to your friends and then whack them upside the head with truth. Don't miss that point. The point of this experience is to internalize these ideas and insights and come up with a way of applying them to your life so that you can live more freely, so that you can change yourself. And when you do that, the world will change as a natural result and you won't have to force it. We have an awesome event for you. Some of you have been given this pamphlet, but even if you don't have this, this is a schedule, you have a phone. You received an email that said, welcome to FECON in the title. And that email gives you a link and a password for the FECON app. If you download that app and you type in your password, it's a simple, like, less than two minute process, you'll have access to the entire schedule of events. It's gonna be a lot easier to keep track of than trying to carry on a paper and looking like the freshman, like, hey guys, you know where uh, the uh, entrepreneurship one is? I, I, so I want you guys to look cool, that's why I'm telling you this, okay? So just download the app. If you don't have the email, that's okay, just go to the registration desk when we're done here, you've got a little time, and let them know, and they'll get you set up so that you can get the schedule on your phone, okay? Now, if you look at the schedule, you'll notice something really cool about the way we're doing things this year. We have different tracks, so we don't just have a, a random blob of a bunch of stuff going on at the same time. We have a disruptive innovators track. We have a creative arts track. We have a philosophy, politics, and economics track. We have a business and perspective track. We have a skills for success track and an entrepreneurship and startup experience track. This is a key aspect of the fee philosophy. There is no one single right way 
to make a difference, to change the world, to create a freer society. You need the perspectives and the practices of many different people who can weigh in from different vantage points. And we have something for everybody here. So be sure to download the app. A couple of other housekeeping items. Out in the atrium, you will see, when you step out those doors, a huge globe. By that globe is the Free Speech Lounge. And um, I think you'll have a lot of fun there. It's a very fun place. Also, we have the screening room, which is in the expo. And the screening room is where you know, we'll be showing you different um, freedom-related, entrepreneurship-related um, uh, videos and movies and things along those lines. You'll get a chance to check out a lot of cool projects that different partners of FEE have been working on. Please do check it out. Also, you're going to see photographers all throughout the space, everywhere you go. This is the photo tap crew. If you look at your, um, your tag, you should have something, a scan bar on there, right? So the photo tap crew, they will take a photo of you and they will scan your bar and that photo will come straight to you. So look for them, they'll be looking for you, but as you're making the rounds, make sure you get your photo, line up your family and friends, and uh, when you go on Instagram or Twitter or wherever the kids go nowadays, don't forget to put the hashtag, hashtag fee 2019. In fact, I encourage you to do that as you're in the breakout sessions, as you're in the, the main sessions like this. If you hear an insight that just resonates with you, if you have an inspiring thought or if you capture a cool image of a couple of people having a conversation, get on social media, pump it up, hype it up. Maybe we'll recruit some more people to come in, but even for the people who don't, maybe they can live vicariously through you and get a little bit of value based on the things that you share. All right. Um, I want to give you a couple of tips on how to get the most out of this conference. I want to give you three. Number one, document everything you learn. One of my favorite quotes is by uh, David Allen in a book called Getting Things Done, where he says, the mind is for having ideas, not holding ideas. And the more pressure you put on the mind to hold ideas, the less flexible and fluid it will be in its ability to have ideas. So you're going to hear a lot of ideas and you're probably only gonna remember about 10% of that. So I encourage you to take notes. Even if questions come up, let's say you're in a cool conversation tonight and there's an interesting question that comes up, write that down because in a breakout session the next day, you might have the opportunity to ask an entrepreneur, to ask a philosopher that question and get a different insight. So I encourage you to take notes. Number two, network, network, network. The most powerful aspect of being at this event is the community and the conversations that are built up around the ideas. You are not alone in your desire to make a difference, in your desire to be a better version of yourself. There are lots of people just like you, and more importantly, there are lots of people who are, who are nothing like you at all. And those people can challenge you to take your mind in a different direction. So engage in conversations. Even if you're shy, even if you feel like, well, I don't know how to start conversations, man. I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm tired of asking people, where are you from, blah, blah, blah. Use whatever you got, and trust me, the people here are gracious enough to accept that. If you come to me and you're like, uh, where are you from? I'm not going to be like, come on, man, be more creative. I'll talk to you, okay? And I'm sure everyone else here will do the same, all right? The third thing I want you to do is make sure you ask lots of questions. But one of the funniest things about breakout sessions and talks is whenever people open up for Q&A, everybody raises their hand, and then people go, all right, I got a comment. And then they give like a 10-minute monologue on what they think too. It's cool to have ideas, but be more selfish than that. This is an opportunity for you to take your own game to a higher level. When you're around people that are brilliant and doing interesting things, take advantage of the opportunity to pick their brains. Many of these people might be people that you can't get a hold of at a later time. All right, everybody ready for this? I, I want to um, give some special recognition. You know, um, as excited as I am about this event, we've got some wonderful people that have made this possible. And I want to give some shout outs, each individual one. Let's give them a round of applause. The LGBTQ for Liberty. Let's give it up for UFM, for our fee presence in Latin America. 
Larry Reed will be talking a lot more about the awesome work that UFM is doing later on in the conference. Let's give it up for Free the People. Let's give it up for Stossel in the classroom. A hearty round of applause for the Heritage Foundation. Let's give it up for the National Review Institute. And last but certainly not least, the wonderful people at Social Evolution. Without your support, none of this would be possible. And without your presence, none of this would be done. So let's make this an exciting time. Let's make this a fun time. And let's be self-interested and figure out together how we can use these ideas to be better versions of ourselves. Because we can change the world, we will change the world, and we won't do it out of guilt. We'll do it, and we'll have a heck of a lot of fun doing it, and we'll make a lot of profit at the same time. All right? Cheers. Let's do this. <laughs>